Before we dive into this video talking about matching personalities to fragrances, I need to get a few things out of the way. Number one, I'm not a psychologist. I do not have expert and professional experience talking about personalities. Number two, these are all generalizations. There's not a ton of nuance here. There's a lot of gaps that can be filled in between with just more expertise. And number three, these are not absolute. There is obviously overlap between the categories I will be discussing, so don't feel like I'm trying to box any of you in. These fragrances don't necessarily have to apply to particular people. I believe that these fragrances in themselves embody the personalities that I'm categorizing them in. So you can relate to any one of these categories, but you can pick and choose what type of scent personality you want to convey on any particular day in any particular situation. I do believe that can be fluid by choice. So again, don't feel boxed in. Now, I actually did a video like this almost two years ago. Didn't get a ton of traffic, but it had a good amount of traffic and it got a lot of great feedback, which was surprising. A lot of you guys seem to really enjoy that video. I'm going to link to the first one up here if you want to check it out. I decided to revisit the topic for 2023 with the same methodology, but of course, different fragrances this time around. So we have three primary personality categories we'll be discussing. I will explain them as we go. If you fall into one or more of these categories, great. If not, at the very least, I hope you glean some insight or entertainment from this video. And again, I hope it comes off as something a little different from the rest of what you're finding on your YouTube feed. So let's dive right into it. So the first personality category is what I'm calling outgoing. I think this one speaks for itself. Obviously, another way to describe outgoing people is extroverted. There is a high sense of extroversion here. Here are a few of the characteristics of an outgoing personality or an outgoing person. They are naturally social. They like to turn strangers into friends. They they tend to spend more time out than they do at home by choice. They work around a lot of people on a daily basis. They are often spontaneous with their decisions. They are typically emotional decision makers. They are energized by interaction with others. They are conscious of their appearance and they love nice things. They might prefer the sun and the summer or the warmer weather in general. And the final tagline that I would use to sum everything up is they will get your attention whether you like it or not. So I have three fragrances to offer that might fit into this category, one for the men, one for the women, and a unisex offering. These fragrances are going to be loud in presence, a little bit more fresh perhaps in their profiles, and generally likable by almost anyone. However, I'm not necessarily picking just straight up mainstream fragrances here. I'm gonna give you some interesting options that are still gonna be very likable. For outgoing men, I'd recommend checking out Octanese from Uniki Luxury. This is probably the strongest aquatic fragrance I've ever put my nose on. I don't actually relate to this type of scent personality in my own personality. It's not really me, but I still enjoy the scent, so I do wear it, but only from time to time and for particular scenarios. It is so powerful that it is pervasive. But what does it smell like? Fresh, salty aquatic with a nice bit of fruitiness with a little bit of an ambery, almost nutty warmth. Definitely some kind of wood woods and maybe ambergris feel like a salty musky feel to it again reminiscent of the ocean but with this beautiful almost bright fruitiness that is very approachable it is loud it will get attention and you don't need much of it so again you've been warned but you outgoing guys this may be exactly what you're looking for so do check it out octanese from uniquely luxury for the ladies outgoing ladies we have palace athene from argos now this is technically a fruity floral fragrance, but it actually has some class to it. There's a lot of women's mainstream designer fragrances that are usually fruity floral. That seems to be a go-to profile that is very likable for women to wear and other people to like on women. So this is a bouquet of florals like hyacinth and violet and there's rose as well. It's sweet, it's fresh, it is floral. There's aspects of certain florals here that give it some depth like hyacinth, which I think can be a bit of a green type of floral. You do get a touch of a greenness that is mixed with some berries. I think there's a beautiful, some kind of red berry feel that is bittersweet. There's a tartness here, but overall it is very opulent, very pleasant. It will get the attention of others. It's also a pretty strong fragrance. Again, outgoing. It is that scent personality. It will match your personality if that's how you carry yourself when you enter a room. You like to get attention. This is gonna help you do that. Maybe it won't get attention all by itself. That's not the point of fragrances. It's merely meant to supplement you and this will do it. So that's one for you outgoing ladies out there who are very confident, not afraid of people. Check out Palace of Theme by Argos. And the unisex offering is a new fragrance to my collection that I 
am absolutely falling for. Honestly, my wife has been getting more wear out of it than me. She's been wearing it pretty consistently, but we both love it equally. It is perfectly unisex and it's amazing if you love ginger. This is literally a smile in a bottle. This is Ingenious Ginger from Goldfield and Banks, one of their newer releases. I recently bought this for my wife for her birthday simply because we sampled it at a perfumery in New York when we were traveling. We loved it so much she fell head over heels for it. Her birthday was coming up. I knew this was going to be a perfect gift for her and it is because she's wearing it like crazy. This is sunshine. This is blue sky. Oh my gosh. I can talk about the notes and all that but what I will say this smells like is a sweet and creamy lemon cake drizzled in ginger beer. It's bright and bubbly and spicy, fresh, and there's this creamy, almost delicious gourmand feel to it, kind of cakey, but mostly it's fresh and effervescent and beautiful. Outgoing, unisex, this is again a smiling personality all wrapped up in this beautiful glass bottle. That is Ingenious Ginger from Goldfield and Banks. Okay, our middle category is what you might expect. I'm calling it reserved. You could call it ambervert. So people who have equal characteristics of both being outgoing and social and maybe a little bit more conservative with how they interact with people. Let's describe some of the characteristics from my point of view. These people are careful and particular about making new friends. They hate small talk and they often prefer deep conversation or none at all. They seldom initiate interactions with strangers unless it feels authentic, but can be highly and top social at the cost of their limited energy when necessary. They can turn it on, so to speak. They can often be the center of attention even when not desired or intended. They tend to have disciplined and regimented routines yet can also be very creative and artistic. They are quite conscious about their appearance and may also like nice things. They work well with others but they do just fine and often better working alone. They appreciate the sun but they love the transition seasons like fall and spring a whole lot more. And the tagline I would use to sum all of this up is versatile and attractive depth with limits. So I wanted to choose three fragrances that on the surface, when you spray them on, you get a whiff, they're like, okay, these are really pleasant. I like what I'm smelling, but there is interest there. There's something that draws you in, something a little bit unusual, but if you do like it, you'll really appreciate it. These fragrances aren't gonna be the strongest fragrances. Again, this is more of a reserved personality, someone that doesn't seek to be noticed at every chance they get. So a fragrance I have for the men, this is an unusual one. It's from Javoy, they call it L'Art de la Guerre, which translates to the art of war. This is a rhubarb based fragrance, fresh, bittersweet rhubarb, a little tart with this nice green mossiness backing it up. And what makes it unusual is the Immortel. The Immortel is this almost dusty tobacco hay-like feel. It's hazy, but it's very subtle. It kind of fills out the heart of the scent and it gives it its character. It makes it definitive, gives it a true personality. When you smell it in the air, it smells elegant. It smells sophisticated, a little bit green, mossy, fresh, kind of almost sweet, but not in a playful or approachable way. I don't mean that in a bad way, but as you smell deep into it, there is unusual elements going on here. This thing is not the strongest fragrance from the brand. They make a lot of strong scents, but this one I find to be a little bit more reserved, which is why I think it fits perfectly here. It doesn't scream off the skin. If people get close to you, They'll get a whiff, they'll understand, okay, you got something on that smells nice, but there's more substance. Highly recommend for this type of personality. For the guys, again, that's L'Art de la Guerre from Javoy. For the ladies, yet again, on the surface, easy to wear, pleasant, very approachable, but a little different when you really tilt your head and look at it. From Teo Cabanel, in collaboration with Mode Trotter. This is called Po Soleil, which I believe means salty skin. And it sums that name up perfectly in its scent. It is reminiscent of being out on the beach on a hot day under the sun, the smell of the sand and the salty waters in the air, and you are sweating and you can smell that salt from your sweat on your skin. What makes this a little unusual is the addition of coconut water. It's a familiar scent, but it is a little odd and not often used. It creates this slightly almost tropical, but unusual usually fresh, watery profile. So it's a very natural smelling scent. It almost smells like, again, natural skin under the sun. So for those ladies that do want to have something that's easy to wear and fresh and even likable, but something that is a little different and more specific than your average mainstream designer women's fragrance, this is one I could easily recommend. That is Posole from 
tail cabinet. And our unisex option for the reserved category is going to what I believe to be a masterpiece. This is called Timbuktu from L'Artisan Parfumeur. This is one of those fragrances that is beautifully unusual, but can still be a signature fragrance if you love it. It can kind of work for any scenario, even though it is very particular and quite different. Primarily a woody incense. There's a dryness here. There's a slight bitterness here from vetiver. There is a slight cooling smoky quality here, but wrapped up in all of that is this unripe mango. So it is fruity without being sweet, almost a vegetal aspect kind of behind all of this woody smokiness. Most people will smell it in the air. They'll like it and then it'll register. Wait, that's what is that? That's a little different. The perfect fragrance for the slightly more reserved personality. One who, again, wants more substance in their scent, but still wants something likable, easy to wear, but not overwhelming and not super attention getting. But those whose attention you do get are the type of people he might want to talk to because you'll have the best conversations with them that feel authentic, as I described earlier. That is Timbuktu from L'Artisan Parfumeur. And our final category, this is not meant to be judgmental in any way. Again, these are purely generalizations, so please don't take offense to this if you happen to relate to some of the characteristics I'm going to describe. This final category is what I call reclusive. You can call it fully introverted. If we're looking at everything as a spectrum, we've gone from one end to the other end. Here are some of the characteristics of those reclusive folks, again, in my observation. They prefer to operate from home, outside of the necessities like food or getting fresh air. They perhaps have a remote job. They might have very few close friends. They are perfectly content without socializing and might even have anxiety surrounding it. They may not be the most conscious around their appearance. They don't really care for stuff. Wintertime or gloomier times of the year might be when they feel most peaceful and when they come alive. They often like to challenge their mind with puzzles, reading, or any other cognitive tasks. They might have strong and polarizing personalities. And the tagline I'd use to describe them in a nutshell is often misunderstood yet brilliant when truly known. So this is a little bit of an unusual personality type. It's one that is not going to be liked by every single person, but those that do appreciate it will experience true brilliance. And a men's fragrance I have to offer that goes along with this personality, in my opinion, is from the house of Tom Ford. It is a fragrance that I did not understand when I first smelled it many years ago, but I've come back around to it and I love it now, and I can really appreciate it. That is Tom Ford Noir Eau de Parfum. To many people, this is gonna smell powdery, earthy, and bitter. At least that's how I experience it. I just could not see a man wearing this because this was marketed for men. But wow, the way it's composed is simply beautiful, artistic, thoughtful, masterful, but not mass appealing. This is a powdery rose, a little bit gothic smelling, but soft with a bitter earthy patchouli backing it up. There's an almost vintage feel akin to something like Habit Rouge from Guerlain, but not quite that, a little bit more modern perhaps. It's something that you don't need to spray a lot of, a few sprays, a handful, maybe three to four or five, especially in the cooler months. This is gonna fit that mood, that personality you might wanna convey, whether you're at home by yourself or or if you do happen to go out. Now, if you do happen to go out and you want to wear this fragrance, guys, I would advise dressing it up a little bit more. Again, I know I just described that. Maybe these people don't always care the most about dressing nice or having an elevated appearance, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I do think this fragrance will supplement you better if you at least put on, you know, a nice collared shirt that fits you, some slacks or jeans that fit you, some decently nice, you know, loafers or something. It can be very low key, but you can still look nice. I think that is going to supplement this personality. Again, that's if you're going out. If you're not, then of course, do your thing, wear what you want. But that is what I'd recommend for the guys. That is Tom Ford Noir. For the ladies, not everyone's favorite rose fragrance for a very particular reason, and that is because of what it is paired with, which is quite a pervasive pairing, and that is with cumin. Not everyone's going to love cumin. It is a spice that people say can smell a little bit like B.O. It can smell sweaty and kind of off and stinky in a way. I happen to like cumin in fragrances for whatever reason. If we're talking about a polarizing note, I fall on one side and it's always been that way. This is Rose 31 from Le Labo. One of the most unique rose fragrances out there. There is a fresh spiciness here. There is a nice approachable transparency to this rose, but when you really get a whiff of it, you realize something supporting this rose is not 
typical and it's that cumin it's all throughout this scent but i think it adds a beauty that again can be misunderstood but if you can appreciate it you can't really get away from it this is a rose fragrance that might change your entire perception on rose because it makes rose simultaneously beautiful and edgy but if you love it completely wearable for the ladies who want a sharper rose something that doesn't just smell petite and light and happy and soft there's some prickliness to this one that is rose 31 from Le labo and finally our unisex offering for the reclusive category this is an odd fragrance it is a very simple one but it's a combination of ingredients that comes together in a way that doesn't really smell like anything else even though there's only a few main things going on here this is coming from the house of florai ku and they call this between two trees beautiful bottle design. This top is actually meant to be a travel atomizer case. The fragrance comes with like a little 10 milliliter atomizer that goes inside and there's another cap that you put on top of it and you can travel with it. Otherwise, it just acts as a very elaborate cap for the full bottle. But what this smells like, wow, it's so different. I've come to like this even more from the first time that I tried it. Grapefruit, very bitter, a little bit juicy, but not necessarily bright. And that is blended with mate, a very peculiar smelling tea vibe. There is a green quality here. There is this sharp herbal quality, unusually sweet the way it mixes with the grapefruit. And it has a woody base of vetiver, which also lends to this bitter quality, this bitter dry woodiness. Some people can sum it up by saying it smells a little bit like an earthy orange with a little bit of an ash quality, a slight ashy smokiness. It's not all that smoky or ashy to me, but I can see where people are coming from with that. An unusual citrus fragrance, citrus and tea in woods that sounds pretty normal but with these particular citrus teas and woods put together and you smell it as one accord it is unusual but it's beautiful if you can appreciate it if you can take the time and the patience to sniff it in different ways up close and from afar you can really find beauty here that is between two trees from fluoride Ku. my main purpose of this video is your feedback i want to know what you think of this type of topic of these personality pairings with fragrances. I think it's something we don't see a ton of talk about. It is a little bit of a daunting topic. I always struggle to feel confident talking about it because I'm purely speaking from my observation and experience. Again, not expertise, but I hope something resonated with you. And whatever did, let me know down in the comments what you think. There's gonna be links to every fragrance I talked about down in the description if you have yet to try one, so have at it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace, I'll see you in the next one.